Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends. Uh, my name is Yue Zizhao. Um, I'm a social professor and a Canada research chair at the School of Communication at Simon Fraser University. Um, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 13th uh, Smythe Lecture uh, dedicated to the memory of uh, Dallas Smythe. Uh, who was a professor at the School of Communication uh, from 76, 1976 till his death in 1992. And I really appreciate the fact that um, so many of you turned out today because I know there's so much going on um, today. Uh, there's the President's Lecture up there in Burnaby, there's Critical uh, Theory Conference, uh, so many other activities going on. Um, so, um, very glad to see you. Uh, Smythe was born in Canada and trained as an economist in the U.S. He, um, after appointments at the Department of Labor and the Federal Communication Commission in the U.S., he became a professor um, at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign in um, 1948. And he taught the first course in the political economy of communication there. Uh, he later established himself as uh, founder or one of the leading figures in the field of political economy of communication and a leading scholar of inference in Canadian and uh, international communication studies. Um, underscoring a defined feature of the political economy approach, which examines uh, uneven power relationships and the dynamics of domination and resistance in society, Smythe was not only an outspoken <coughs> critic of the colonization of our consciousness by the mainstream media in North America, but also a key analyst and supporter for popular struggles for social justice and the radical democratic alternatives to <coughs> consumer capitalism. This led him to focus his research on the role of communications in the reproduction of both capitalist and socialist societies, or actually existed socialist societies um, of his time. And uh, he wrote about communication policies and uh, practices not only in the United States Canada, but also in Chile, Yugoslavia, China, and also in the international arena at, um, at large. Uh, as a political economist, Smythe firmly anchored his work in class analysis, yet at the same time, he was very, um, also very keenly aware of the complicated intersections between class, race, and gender, um, especially in the North American context. Um, his very well-known book, Depen Dependency Road, for example, uh, devoted considerable space to discuss the struggles for social justice uh, by other uh, racial minorities of African Americans, Chicanos, uh, the Puerto Ricans uh, in the U.S., as well as the First Nations people in both the U.S. and Canada. He noted that while efforts by um, these racial min minorities had led to uh, the elimination of the extreme forms of racist stereotyping, and he actually cited the phenomenal success of the television show Roots. Uh, as evidence of this, he said, he, and I quote, the mass media continue to cultivate more or less racist values uh, and the white people's nationalism. This book was published in 1980. So it is uh, truly fitting that uh, this evening we welcome Professor John Downing from another professor from Illinois, uh, this time Southern Illinois, um, and one of the most pop, uh, cosmopolitan uh, critical communication scholars in the world to address the topic of media and race in a lecture entitled The Americas, Not Yet the Post Racist Media Scenario. Uh, this topic is especially fitting. Uh, um, in the context of uh, the Illinois Senate, um, Obama's campaign for the U.S. Pres uh, Democratic presidential nomination. Um, 
before I call my colleague uh, Bob Hackett to um, <laughs> give uh, Professor John Downey a proper introduction, please allow me to make a few acknowledgments. Um, for uh, generous financial support, I want to thank um, Director Martin Lab Laba of the School of Communication, um, also Dean Brian Lewis of the Faculty of Applied Science um, at SFU, as well as SFU President uh, Michael Stevenson. Uh, also, I would like to thank um, Brenda Baldwin at the Schools of uh, School of Communication and uh, also Susan Jamison McLaurin for um, coordination and publicity. Finally, also I want to thank um, um, uh, Lorena's who is there uh, taping this lecture so that it will be available on the SFU web, uh, School of Communications website for a larger audience. So now I would like to ask uh, my colleague Bob um, to introduce um, Professor John Downey. Thank you, uh, Zhao. And uh, it's my pleasant duty to uh, introduce John Downing, or JD as is known to uh, his friends and colleagues. Um, and it's a difficult task to summarize his achievements in three or four minutes. So I'm going to crib from several other documents. Uh, and the first is his own bio, which is online. Uh, John Downing is director of the Global Media Research Center in the College of Mass Communication and Media Arts at Southern Illinois University, Carbondale. Before that, he taught at the University of Texas in Austin, at Hunter College in New York, where I first met John in 1986, and he's been a, a valued and supportive colleague ever since. The University of Massachusetts in Amherst, and Greenwich University in London, going right back to 1968. Uh, J.D. has written at least uh, eight books, or co-written or edited at least eight books, including Radical Media, Rebellious Communication and Social Movements, uh, The Sage Handbook of Media Studies, of which he's editor-in-chief, uh, Representing Race, which is co-authored with another leading writer in the field, Charles Husband. Um, other books include uh, The Media Machine, going back to 1980, the same year as Dallas Smythe's book, Dependency Road, was published, Film and Politics in the Third World, uh, questioning the Media, a Critical Introduction, and international, uh, Internationalizing Media Theory. John has published uh, recent studies of the global indie media movement and is currently working uh, on editing a one-volume international encyclopedia of social movement media. So that's uh, the official bio, but I really don't think it does him justice. Um, so I want to quote from a second document, which is a memo uh, from my colleague Joe, uh, reminding us of the scope of John, John Downing's scholarship. Uh, it includes his internationalism, his extensive knowledge of international uh, and uh, comparative media systems, particularly his studies of East European and post-Soviet media, uh, his work on third world cinema and politics, his work on media and democratic communication, on social movement and alternative media in all its forms, and of course his, his recent work on, uh, in fact, ongoing work on media and race. But again, I think we need to flesh that out a bit, and I want to quote from a, a third and final document, which is actually a letter of reference that I had occasion to write just a couple of months ago in support of a nomination uh, for John Downing as college, um, the Outstanding Scholar Award of his college, which was successful, by the way, so another of his achievements. I wrote several points here that I would like to quote. Uh, first, that John has made enormous contributions as a researcher and scholar, but also as a teacher, a mentor, a builder of communities of knowledge, and an intellectual beacon for individuals and movements around the world struggling for social justice. John goes to great lengths without sacrificing theoretical rigor to make his work as engaging and accessible as possible, avoiding the unnecessary jargon and impenetrable prose that is still too fashionable in some corners of the academy, uh, you can make your own judgments about that, I suppose. But um, I, a third point is that uh, as a white male scholar of British background, he deserves considerable kudos for raising and problematizing questions of race, gender, and Western centricism in media studies, and for challenging the related assumptions and blind spots uh, in scholarship. And interestingly, one of the first uh, media and communication books I ever read was John Downing's book, The Media Machine, which was published in 1980, as I mentioned, which is about the time I was switching sort of incarnations from political science to communication. And yesterday, I was just sort of flipping through it uh, and just came across 
almost at random, uh, flipping through it, and came across a phrase, uh, quote, if we turn to these papers' treatment of racism and sexism, we find something startling straight away. They seem to pay as little attention to these forms of oppression as capitalist media. They indicate the other side of the coin of economism, the virtual neglect of oppression outside the workplace by the state or in the home. So I think that speaks to a, a really, a really long-standing concern uh, on John's part with the question of, of race and, and uh, gender, uh, as well as class and inequalities of power in the media system. Uh, and I want to conclude with uh, a fourth point that I made in, in my um, uh, letter of reference which was about his book, Radical Media, which I've used as a sort of a core textbook in my course on media democratization since its um, publication in 2001. Uh, in a published book review, I described it as a landmark achievement with an almost encyclopedic range of examples and analyses that is as impressively productive for the range of questions it suggests as for those it directly addresses. It is a prismatic study one that offers a masterful consideration of radical media from an impressive variety of disciplinary and theoretical perspectives to make the case for their worthiness as a field of both political practice and academic study. What I didn't say uh, in that, that letter was that what I really liked about radical media were the ongoing metaphors and references to beer. Um, things are always, in, in John's view, uh, are often yeasty, um, they are in ferment, um, they are a feisty brew, and so, uh, and in fact, there's one phrase uh, where I think he contrasted the joys of microbrews um, with what he called uh, the carbonated muck of corporate beer. And I think that was one occasion where I actually stood up and applauded a book that I was reading. Really <laughs> um, so I think uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sure we're going to get today uh, a, a feisty brew uh, on the question of the Americas, not yet the post-racist uh, media scenario. So, John Downing. Thank you.